Thank you, Charles. Now for a real insight into the all goings on in the Smith household. <laughs> On Anthony to spill the beans. I mean to. Leaving me to keep the ball. We're back here again to tell you the truth of Marriage Life. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> one thing, another thing happens. I am single, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I know it may be hard to believe with my rugged good looks, my witty personality, and all those All Ireland titles I happen to have in Mocker. But despite of and my earring, but despite of these many qualities, I have yet to be snapped up or held down for any prolonged amount of time. And do I look upset? No! I strive in my unmarried life. As you may have gathered, I do not struggle to converse with females. So both in my time in Dublin during the week and in at boy at the weekends, I have learned and grown as a person because of my conversations with females. And that would not happen in the same way if I was married. As some of you may know, there are some things that just ruin a com conversation with a lovely lady. One of them is farting on front of them, which I learned to my detriment one night. The other is wearing a, a wedding ring or being married. When another woman realises you are married, a mist of awkwardness lowers upon you both. Now I am not promoting any married men to go out and try chancing their arm with other women, but I do believe that any man should be able to talk with, to any woman without an air of awkwardness or take the ring off first. <laughs> oh. Sorry, no, <laughs> okay. I like no that because your wife is there. <laughs> Eamon, you say that you that only in marriage can you be loved and cherished. I get loved and I get cherished. <laughs> the time of my loving and cherishedness only lasts from 12 to 24 hours, depending on how comfy her bed is. <laughs> you claim you're in heaven, but I say you're a liar. Because you have never walked into Doran's on a Saturday night and realised that you could get any woman in there, depending on which one realises how amazing you truly are. <laughs> Charlie, I said Charlie is. Sorry, sorry. Charlie, you claim that you're happily married. I know for a fact that in fear, every. <laughs> Rose. You for a rose on the first anniversary and now you're trapped with it. <laughs> God for broke man, would you stop buying a rose? <laughs> and you say that you have that you have witnessed ultimate happiness. And I say to you, Charles, you don't know what it is. Most Times were different back in your day. For God's sake, TV was in black and white. <laughs> now, ultimate <laughs> happiness is different now because bachelors have such a larger range to women. Women in certain parts of the country are easier and more um, uh, willing to do things. You didn't have that chance. You never travelled the country like young men can these days. To conclude, learn from yesterday, live for today and dream for tomorrow. Words I live by, and I think this highlights openly what my team are saying. Because dreams when you're a bachelor are job promotions, exploring new talents, meeting new people. Whereas when you're married, dreams are hoping that she hasn't che eaten the cheese and onion crisp before bed, that her mortgage will magically disappear, and that once in a while she will do the same. And I get all this information from Charlie Smith sitting right over there. <laughs> Join with me and propose this motion. <laughs> I was just going to say, I can't wait to hear what happens when you get home to your mommy. Can I have a call? Oh, what? Oh. Can I have a call on Claire Higgins to put her argument forward for the opposition? Uh, chairperson, adjudicators, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to say that really I didn't need to talk at all because all I had to say was look at what I am so blessed to be surrounded by. <laughs> One, two, three, serenely contented and happy. <laughs> but then I thought, well, maybe I should justify my existence. Because Martha got up and she told us at the beginning that she wasn't married herself and she hadn't experience of marriage, but she could offer an opinion. And that is exactly what she did. But 
Unfortunately, she failed to deal with the facts because the facts are, whether we like it or not, that the evidence is there that a bachelor's life is not better or happier than that of a married man. The reality is that the life expectancy for married men is longer than that of bachelors <laughs> because they are contented with <laughs> their lot. The, the reality <laughs> is that 90% of married men only leave a marriage when they already have another partnership, another union set up. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the reality is that that need is there, that longing is there within the male to have a partner with whom they can form a union. And can I clear something else up here? There's talk over there about pieces of paper. Nowhere in the dictionary does it say that married means you have a piece of paper. What it says is that to be married means to be united in wedlock. To be united means being united in mind, being united in body, having that meeting of mind and body with that someone with whom you are married. You and it is clear to me, ladies and gentlemen, that thanks to Roger's Jeremy Kyle performance <laughs> over there, that unfortunately at that stage in his life he had not made that union with somebody. He had a piece of paper, he still has a piece of paper that says within the law he is tied legally to this person. Legally but it married. is clear to me, ladies and gentlemen, that he is not married. Because if they were truly married, if they were truly united in wedlock, then he would face up to the fact, not the opinion, that the life of a married man is happier than that of a bachelor. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that is the fact, not an opinion, which is what we have to base our case on here tonight. Martha talked about people being shackled by chains. I don't see any chains. He's not rattling. He's not rattling. No, he's not rattling there, ladies and gentlemen. No chains. Mind the scars on the whip, will you? by chains, they are happily married with their wives because the reality is that's where they are happiest. Whether it's getting his home cooked meal for Eamon, whether it's sharing a bed of roses for Charlie, whether it's organizing, enjoying a good lively conversation with his wife for Brian, whatever it is ladies and gentlemen, these three men are evidence that being married for a man is happy. Unfortunately, it's not the case for women, but we're not here to talk about that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the evidence is that for a man, then it is he is more contented in his life. Um, Anthony talked about, you know, he could he could get some a woman into or did he say to bed in front of his father? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, what he was talking about was ratification. Oh. Now, ladies, oh. ladies and gentlemen, it's it is well known that men who need that kind of gratification in their life can go out and pay money for it. That doesn't make them, that, that doesn't make them happy. That does satisfy their whatever <laughs> that particular length of time until the next time. But that's not what happy is. Happy is being contented with your lot. If you are contented with your lot, you don't have the need to be going out to seek gratification. So it is very clear to me, ladies and gentlemen, that Anthony is not happy with his lot. He is not content with his lot because he was totally preoccupied with what was available in Doran's on Saturday night. He was totally preoccupied by how easy women might be in a certain part of the country. And he reminded me a little of, of a, a man I know who uh, was later in life, actually he's not married yet, but he's on the way, and he spent quite a long time looking for a wife because he wasn't content. Now, he was gratified from time to time. <laughs> But he wasn't content. And at one stage, you know, somebody asked him, why wasn't he married yet? And he said, well, I haven't met the perfect woman. But the trouble was, the women he was meeting were looking for the perfect man, and they weren't seeing that. Either. So, you know, uh, uh, it's written. What do I mean about what? Listen up, Raj. I mean that this debating isn't about opinion. You can think what you like. But the reality is, as Eamon and Charlie have already pointed out, you don't know what you're missing. And it is only when you are happily married men that you'll be able to look back like these three fine men here and say, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was missing till I became happily married. Ladies and gentlemen, the life of a bachelor is not happier than that of a married man. Reject this ludicrous motion. Yeah.